I'm Hazel, it's Saturday today, which makes it time to sit down and catch up on the WOW news of the week, what I have been up to, and answer some of your questions. This week, the War Within Alpha officially began rolling out, and with it came tons of news about the next expansion. For this week's news video, I want to round up and compile my picks for the biggest and most exciting headlines from this week's worth of Alpha news. One of the first things that caught my eye, both in the Warbands blog post that Blizzard rolled out explaining the new Warbands improvements in detail, as well as in the alpha itself, is the Warband Bank tabs and prices. The Warband Bank is a new section of your bank that any of your characters can access, and everything in it is shared across all of those characters. You can put anything that you like in here as long as it is not soulbound, so this is a great place to store account bound gear and then transfer it to different characters, as well as build a huge repository of crafting materials that your various alts might want to craft from. You can craft directly from the bank without needing to pull things out, just the same way that you can with your regular reagent bank, and this is one of the most exciting quality of life warbands features that I've seen so far. The interface looks like this, and there are five tabs that you can unlock for more and more space in your warband bank in exchange for increasing amounts of gold. Wowhead has checked out the price progression for the five tabs, and this is what it looks like, with tab 4 setting you back 500,000 gold, and tab 5 costing an eye-watering 2.5 million gold. I have a feeling that I am not going to be the only person running around for some time as either like a 3-tab or a 4-tab gamer. <laughs> I will say this is far from the first time that Blizzard has offered big quality of life improvements in exchange for gold, like substantial amounts of gold, and you can get the lower tiers for more approachable amounts. As a reference point, back in Wrath of the Lich King, the Vendor and Repair Mammoth came out, and that was very expensive at the time, around 12,000 gold. And then later on in Mists of Pandaria, they brought out the Transmog Yak for like 120,000 gold, which again was a lot of gold at the time, but is more accessible nowadays. And then of course there was the whole Brutosaur thing, and the point of of my story is that this is a lot of gold, but it's not the first time they've done something like this. And it's not a mount, but it is still a one-time purchase that adds like permanent convenience and quality of life to your WoW account. And it's also going to, like those earlier mounts, become more accessible over time with inflation. You know, that 12,000 gold with a ton of gold back in Wrath of the Lich King, but nowadays it's not such a big deal to go get yourself a Traveler's Tundra Mammoth. It might be a very, very long time frame, but I can see the same process happening for these Warband Bank tabs. And it's also worth noting that all of this is alpha, it's early testing, and all of these values are subject to change, especially in response to feedback. And I think they're getting some feedback on these numbers. Another account-wide convenience that I'm excited about coming in the War Within are these account-wide leveling achievements. This is kind of neat. If you hit level cap on two different characters, you gain a Warband Bank Distance Inhibitor toy from completing the Dynamic Duo achievement. That means that on a three-hour cooldown, any of your alts can access the Warband Bank from whenever they are, which is incredibly convenient. Maybe they're out gathering and you want to drop all of your stuff into the bank at the end of the session, but you don't want to actually take them back to town. You can summon a bank to wherever they are. And then along a similar vein, reaching level 80 in the War Within on multiple characters is going to grant a stacking bonus experience gain for your account. So you get an extra 5% experience gain for your first character that gets to 80. And there are more achievements for accruing up to 5 different level 80s, so likely a maximum of 25% bonus experience that is earnable. So if you're the kind of person that likes to level a lot of alts, you will be able to level a lot of alts a little bit faster. <laughs> Speaking of reasons to level multiple characters, there have also been discovered these new multi-role achievements for dungeons. Algarian Dungeoneer requires you to do the new War Within dungeons on Mythic Zero difficulty as a healer, a tank, and a damage dealer in exchange for cosmetic rewards. That's really fun, because that's a great excuse to kind of get out of your comfort zone and try something that you're not used to if you're not the kind of person that normally does all three on a regular basis. And remember when you're looking at that, that the Mythic Zero difficulty is going to be more challenging and relevant than it is right now um, because of this difficulty squish that's coming in Season 4 that they're going to continue with in The War Within. I personally love a good excuse to pretend that I'm going to play an alt for a while, and achievement like this is just the perfect thing for that. Speaking of dungeons, we now know what the Season 1 War Within dungeon pool is going to look like. There are four of the brand new War Within dungeons in there, along with the Necrotic Wake, Grim Batol, Siege of Boralus, and Mists of Tirna Scythe. You like that nice little sandwich I made with like the nicer ones on either end? <laughs> in my subjective opinion. We are officially far enough out from Shadowlands that they are bringing Shadowlands dungeons back around, which um, is fair, but wow. <laughs> 
I am, for my part, terrified to go back into Siege of Brellis because all I really remember from doing it last time was getting eaten by sharks after failing to jump onto a dock and not doing a very good job of kiting the boss that you have to kite around the room. I get myself cornered a lot. It's a bit of a problem. <laughs> Looping back a little bit to Warbands and other account-wide improvements, Blizzard did release a huge write-up on Warbands in The War Within and what that means. So I will link that below if you want to read. It's great detail. It's good stuff. It's got lots of good examples. One common misconception about Warbands that I keep seeing cropping up, I want to address real quick before we get into this. The word Warband is just a term for their overall account-wide improvements. It doesn't mean any particular amount of your characters. All of the characters on your WoW account are part of your Warband. There's some confusion because they also have this new login scene feature where you can favorite four of your different characters to kind of hang out around a campfire, and they talked about in the future adding different cosmetic scenes that you can earn. Um, then the unspoken part was you'll probably be able to buy them too, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But I've, I've seen some confusion about, you know, how many characters can I add to my warband? Which characters are going to get access to the warband bank, for example? And the answer is all of them. The four character scene is purely a cosmetic thing. It's just like a little piece of flair. It has nothing to do with which characters can or cannot use these features. So warbands just means you're all of your characters in your account. It's just a big word for your alts. In that post about it, they talked more about how the reputations are going to work. The new War Within reputations are going to be account-wide, so not like you get faster rep on your, on your alt when you do it, but that all of your characters have the same rep bar. They all progress it together. Um, they talked about how they're going to avoid making it possible to just, like, no-life it by doing the campaign over and over again, and the answer is that you're only going to get rep from a quest on your first time per account doing that quest. And because of that, they needed to go back in and take out the human diplomacy racial because otherwise you would be silly to do that quest for the first time on anything other than a human if it was intact. So they are removing the human reputation bonus racial and they're going to replace it with something else. We don't know what yet, but diplomacy is finally meeting its end and we are going to have something different to replace it with in the War Within. They also said that most Dragonflight reps, with the exceptions of the Snail Racer and the Furbolg language rep, the other Dragonflight reps are going to work the same way. Those are going to become account-wide in the War Within, and over time they're going to work to add more and more reps retroactively to the system to make them truly account-wide. Not for everything. They did specify that some reps, especially things like Scryers or Aldor that require like a character-specific choice, those ones won't be considered for it, but most of your generic reps given enough time, should hopefully be added to this account-wide rep thing. Another note along that vein, account-wide currency, kind of. It's not truly account-wide currency, it's not like one shared pool of currency across all of your characters. However, within your currency tab, you're going to be able to transfer currencies from other characters to the one you're playing. You'll be able to pull them from alts that you're not logged into onto the character that you are logged into and presumably want to go shopping on. Doing this bypasses the old mechanic of buying a BOA item, mailing it to the desired character, and then using that item on that character. Um, this way you can just kind of do it directly through the currency window without having to log over at all. They did say that currencies intended for purchasing cosmetics will usually be free to transfer, and then other currencies can be transferred at a loss, and then some currencies like crests and flightstone equivalents will not be transferable at all. Uh, the example they gave here was moving around dragon Isle supplies, which is going to be super nice for collecting all of those vendor cosmetics. It's not exactly the truly pooled account-wide currency that I had in mind, but it's leagues better than what we have now, so I'm very excited. Similarly, for gold, it looks like we are not going to have just one pool of gold that all of your alts have access to. However, the Warband Bank does have a gold deposit section, so you could summon that Warband Bank toy, drop your gold on your alt into that Warband Bank, and then withdraw it on any character that you like. I think that that's a little easier and more convenient than mailing gold around to your different characters. A little bit. <laughs> I guess we have mailbox toys the same way that we're going to have warbank toys. Um, I personally would kind of prefer to have all of the characters just share <laughs> their gold so you don't have to worry about which character is holding it. Um, and it doesn't seem like you're going to be able to pull gold the same way that you can pull your currency tab currencies. Because that also would be better. But it's possible that there's either like a tech limitation there or maybe the system is better than I'm assuming and I just don't understand it yet. <laughs> Other new things, The War Within is debuting an Arachnophobia mode. This is a toggle option that you can select in your accessibility settings that turns various spider models in the game into crabs. This mode affects mounts, enemies, bosses, and beyond, and is a thoughtful thing for them to add ahead of many, many spider enemies that we're going to be encountering in the various Nerubian and just underground areas in The War Within. 
Speaking of mounts, dynamic flying has been expanded in the War Within to many, 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 many mounts. Hundreds and hundreds of flying mounts are now able to dragon ride, or the new word is sky riding on the War Within Alpha. The Soaring Speltome can do it, horses can do it, nearly every flying mount in the game. It was difficult for me to find flying mounts that could not sky ride, and it's possible that more of those will get flagged for it over time. Um, the Otherworldly Audit Carrier was one that could not do it, and that was like the only one that I could find that like obviously stuck out as an example at this time. You can toggle between sky riding and normal flying by clicking a button in your mount journal, and you can see which one you're currently on by checking a buff. Um, you're going to need to earn the privilege to use normal flying in the new war within zones by completing a kind of Pathfinder style achievement. It seems like it's just going to require campaign questing and exploration, but in older areas you can toggle between them and then either sky ride or normal fly at your pleasure. This does mean that you've got fun things like druid flight forms being able to sky ride, you can do barrel rolls on the bird, you've got evoker soar form being able to static fly, that's kind of neat too. After an entire expansion limited to using mainly just a handful of mounts, it feels so good to be able to dip back into your mount collection. Some of them look better sky riding than others, um, but I don't care, I'm just glad that most of them can do it. <laughs> And then over in LiveWow, we can't forget that Season 4 is coming in just a couple more days. This upcoming weekly reset has the fourth and final season of Dragonflight, and the Awakened Raid schedule for Season 4 has been announced. Uh, the main takeaway here is that after seven weeks of Season 4, all of the raids will become permanently awakened, which scales up their difficulty and their loot pool. You're going to get one bullion per week, and it takes two of them to buy a special item, so every two weeks you can get a new piece of item from the bullion vendors, so if there's particular trinkets that aren't dropping for you, weapons, rings with special effects, you can just pick them up pretty easily. The main thing that I've seen concern about is because the awakened raids are going to be basically left on after seven weeks. That's effectively the end of the first version of difficulty for them, which might have been nice for people trying to farm cosmetics out of the older raids. Right now, going back into Vault of the Incarnates to run it to try to get like the Razagest skin to drop is easier than it's going to be when Vault of the Incarnates is bumped up to awaken difficulty. Uh, at least easier in terms of numbers, not necessarily in terms of finding a group. Leaving all of these raids on Awakened definitely kind of sets back the timeline for when they're going to be easily soloable. And I'm curious about whether that's something that Blizzard considered when they were making that choice. Maybe they'll make it a toggle, or maybe they're just not that worried about it. And then in my life this week, in Retail WoW, I finished my World Awoken meta achievement. I have my Tyvan, he's still normal size for now, but I've been promised that he's going to be very big and fluffy in 10.2.7. And I have managed to get into the War Within Alpha. I'm so happy and excited. And I'm going to be streaming lots of it on my Twitch channel, as well as putting together videos as I can right here. And then questions from this week. Stefan asks, how will dungeon portals be gained in Season 4? Is it still by doing 20s? The best info I could find on this topic was from the Wowhead write-up on Season 4 rewards, which stated that the portals will be from completing plus 10s. Now, on that article, the actual achievements that they referenced still had the old value of a plus 20, but that's not too surprising because that's what it took to get the portals the first time those portals were available in Season 1, and due to the difficulty squish, I am expecting that value of plus 10s to be accurate. And then Zeruz wants to know, do we know if we can collect all of the transmogs on one mop remix character, or if I want priest slash class sets, do I have to play a priest in it and then make another for male transmogs? So I looked into this in the mob remix testing. I totally forgot to talk about it in last week's video. Thank you for asking. Uh, you only need one character. During remix testing on a hunter, I was able to buy a plate transmog set and learn it to my account without any trouble. You can buy all of the transmog sets for all armor types in one character. You can learn all of them. You do not have to make a remix alt of each armor type if you want to collect all of the transmog. Same holds true for class sets. This is different from how transmog collecting is going to work in The War Within. The class tier sets from MOP that are available on the remix vendors are tagged by armor type and not by class. So you can mug the class set on a priest or a mage or a warlock regardless of which set it was originally. And you can learn that item on any character of any armor type. So you only need one character. You can level more if you like, but you do not need to do multiples. And then Muffin wants to know, are there any other ways to farm Ominous Conscious besides fishing? I'm trying to do an achievement for Army of the Fed, wanting to know if there are any better ways and if you know anything about them. 
So you can join a fishing group to kind of speed up the rate that you get them from fishing. You can do lunker farming groups and I've heard that can be good. The other thing you can try is if you have the Tuscar renown for it, Tuscar tackle box treasures can also drop ominous conches. So if you turn on fish tracking to see the Tuscar tackle boxes, and reportedly, if you have your Iskar and Harpoon in your inventory, the Tuscar tackle boxes will have a better drop rate of the ominous conches. I don't know if that's like superstition, but that's what the Wowhead comments were saying. Do that and then fly along the waterways in the Dragon Isles and you should be able to scoop up lots of the treasures with hopefully lots of conches in them. And then that's been the week. Thank you very much for watching. If you are looking for more details and news from the War Within Alpha, I would say that I'll be streaming it on my Twitch channel. Mr. GM has been going ham on Twitter with lots of updates, so that's a good source. And then of course there's the Wowhead news feed that is ever rolling <laughs> and ever detailed to try to stay afloat on all of these updates. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.